Hey guys, welcome back to the Keaton Knife Shop. I hope you're all ready, because today we're going to completely destroy this knife. So you heard that right. I'm going to be completely destroying this knife today. So let's talk about why. During the heat treat of this blade, I got it too hot. I got it up to around 1700 degrees Fahrenheit, which for 1084, you'd rather be around 1500 degrees Fahrenheit. You can tell I got it too hot because of the blistering that I saw in the blade's finish after the quench. The blistering is small, or they are small circles in the blade finish that look like bubbles or just tiny circles in your finish, and that is an indication that you got the blade too hot and you had some blistering on the surface. Now, you can generally grind through this surface finish, but it still brings into question the quality of your heat treat on the blade. I would never put a blade that has been blistered out into the wild for general use. It was the overheating of this blade specifically that influenced me to make the last two videos on this channel, which were how to monitor your forge's temperature with a thermocouple and how to build a forced air burner so that you can run at lower temperatures in your forge. I'll put a link to both of those videos in the cards above. So the stage is set. I have an overheated blade, which I normally would have thrown away. However, I want to see how not only the blade performs when it's been overheated, but also how my handle construction performs. I use two canvas micarta handle scales on this knife with two brass Corby fasteners and West Systems G-Flex epoxy. I want to know how not only the blade holds up, but also how these handle scales stay on the knife. I took the handle to a 220 grit finish. I took the blade to a 120 grit finish. And then I sharpened the blade with my Edge Pro and a 400 grit stone. So I'm going to go ahead and transition to a voiceover for the rest of the testing of this video. And you can see I start off um, trying to chop the 2x4 with this knife, but it doesn't have that much heft to it. So I transition to using a hammer to baton this knife through some 2x4. So I did this for much longer than I showed here in the video, but I just wanted to make sure I get it fully tested. Um, I then beat it tip first into the 2x4 and then proceeded for about 10 minutes to try to get it out. Uh, definitely got stuck in there real good. Ended up using an axe to uh, spread the 2x4 a little wider to get it out. And I did a really highly scientific test here, which is throwing it against the fence. Uh, didn't see any real damage there. And then I started dropping it from uh, successfully higher positions, uh, getting all the way up to eight feet. I then did some edge rollover test into some 2x4 and then eventually into some uh, plywood. It performed perfectly fine here, uh, no, no edge damage. Uh, it's still kind of sharp at this point, so we haven't completely destroyed the edge. I then have this piece of metal that measures out to 30 thousandths of an inch thick. It was an old parts tray. Uh, so I went ahead and started popping some holes in it. Uh, it did a decent job at putting holes in this. I mean, this is thicker than the tin can, you know, so um, it definitely uh, could do some damage. And then I scraped up against the fire brick and I, I think that did the majority of the tip damage that I'm about to show. So all in all, like I said earlier, it's held up pretty good. You don't see any major edge deformation from the batoning. The micarta handle, other than some cosmetic issues, is still sound. The tip here, which I'm going to zoom in on in a, se in a second, uh, you can see I uh, had the majority of the damage. So just a little rounding there. I think I actually lost a little bit of that tip. So that's, uh, that's definitely a failure. So now we're moving on to the complete destruction of this knife via a uh, flex test. Uh, I stuck the edge in the vise and started flexing. And it looks like it broke. So you can see the grain structure there. I don't, I don't know what you can take away from that. If, if any of you guys are pros with grain structure, go ahead and uh, make a comment in the sec comment section below and, and teach me something because I don't know much about it other than the fact that uh, fine is better. So here we go. I'm, I'm crushing the handle at a diagonal so as to hopefully separate the scales from the tang. And this, uh, this worked pretty good. The chisel got it all the way off though. 
So guys, it looks like we did a pretty damn good job at beating this knife up pretty good. It is completely destroyed, I would say. I will say that I am a little surprised at how fine the grain structure is, uh, considering how poorly the heat treat was done uh, with the overheating of the blade and whatnot. So I have to do a little more research on good and bad grain structure, uh, how you can tell visually, but it looks a little better than I thought. I'll say the handle held up pretty good. Uh, it took some significant shear force to get it to start uh, separating from the tang. Uh, I took a chisel to it in order to uh, bust the Corby fasteners off. So the Corby fasteners are completely sheared off and it looks like the G-Flex epoxy uh, has busted as well. So not too bad. We did a good job busting up this handle and uh, I'd say it's beyond repair. So that wraps up this video. If you guys liked it, go ahead and hit the like button below. Also, hit that subscribe button in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. Uh, if you, especially if you want to see more videos like this, uh, how to make knife making tools, tool reviews, and then also some just knife builds to give you some ideas in your own shop. So until the next time, I'll catch y'all on the flip side.